I know a lot of people who were given a lot of shit and are super considered successful because they were positioned to be successful. But deep down, you know. You know if you did it by yourself. Right. You know what you were given. You know if, you know, how resilient you really are. And I think that in order to be really confident and to have a true sense of self and self-esteem, you have to be able to have self-efficacy to know that you could do it on your own. Off air, we were we were talking shit about somebody who we don't have to say their name. Um, but I am curious because we, we were in should. that. We were, oh, okay. Yeah, if you no, want, I will. Sounds like I was bus checking on the last. It episode. It sounds like bed. No, I'm no. no. Well, <laughs> <laughs> so no, bad. Okay. Well, what's interesting? So we have a live audience in here, and so they've had this opportunity to have this listen to this conversation. And you know, uh, ironically, it wasn't uh, we didn't plan it to go this direction, but we're, we've been talking about. Uh, you know, these people that we meet in in this space, right? Mm -hmm. we've, we've all, between you and Max and us, had the opportunity to meet a lot of these people that are, you know, super famous on YouTube or Instagram or podcasting. Social whatever. media. Yeah, social media, right? right? And I think the thing that draws us, why we would consider you a friend, Max a friend, is uh, the authentic. And it's just amazing how rare it is that when you meet somebody, they're fucking real. Yeah, they, normal. Almost, it's it's almost more common when you meet one of these, you know, social media celebrities that they're they're nothing like they portray. Has that been your experience? Not only has that been my experience, I find it to be so disturbing. And I was saying this, we, we were talking, yeah. even before you walked into the room, you know, I think you see it more and more. See, I think as you, as you get maybe more notoriety and more... Uh, I don't know, more popular on social media platforms, you see the the claws come out more and you also can see behind the curtain a lot more. Uh, but there's a few things that I find very interesting. I find it super interesting how um, there's different buckets, but at the end of the day, what really bothers me are people who are out there touting authenticity, being real and um, you know, helping people, like giving back gratitude. Like you hate your, these are all like hashtags, you know, like it's about giving back. It's about uh, paying it forward. It's about helping. And it's the same people who are the most, like they're, they're the most com badly competitive, not in a good way competitive. They're, they, they are, they'll use you. They're, they're all, they're yeah. all social climbers, users, competitive. And it's an internet marketing game. And it's like snake oil salesmen. Like, that's how I feel. That's how I see it happening. I don't find there to be a lot of authenticity. I don't think any of these people are necessarily experts. I mean, what's great about you guys and why I like you guys, truthfully, is because you are an expert in something, right? Like, you have like a background in, in fitness and health. And, like, that is what your platform is. You're not out there touting how to be uh, an entrepreneur and all these other things, but not even doing it. Like, you're practicing what you preach. You're you know, you, you are, you have become great entrepreneurs. You have become these people that are doing certain things. And then you talk about it, but these people who are, I find like, it's like a money grab. Like, how do I grab money off of this person and, and, and suck every dollar out of this person with this funnel, right? With all about sales funnels. How can I like convert that, that person into yeah. uh, a continually paying monthly user of something uh it's it's all a game of like how what, what can i get out of you and then who can i align myself that can help me and if you cannot help me and if i cannot squeeze every contact and piece of information out of you then you're you're like discarded and not necessary i, I got a story for you i'm not gonna say the person's name because i don't want to uh, <clears throat> i don't want to you know call them out or whatever but there's a person in our space who rhyme has, it rhyme it rhyme it no, no i'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna like you did. <laughs> he, he had he has he had a pot he has a podcast and it's you know it was relatively it was it was big. It was, it was a little, bit, it was a little was, bigger than ours at the time, but okay. we were coming up and we <clears throat> wanted to um, have him on the show, talk about being on his show. So Justin and I set up a meeting with him. Oh, I remember this. Yeah. And he showed up and he was like so big timed us. Like, yeah, well, you know, if you guys get to my level and one day you'll do this and like blah, blah, blah. And Justin and I are sitting there like, what are you like? What's going on here? Like, we're trying yeah. to. You know, make make friends, make contacts, yeah, we're just networking, other, like networking, whatever. Posture, total, yeah, total posture, total whatever. Anyway, I don't know. Like three years later, uh, <laughs> <laughs> this person has to be on their show, yeah. and now we've surpassed them. And the total change in the personality. Oh man, Sal, you're you're this, and oh, you guys are great. And if you need help, let me do this. I'll do that for you. Let me introduce you to these people. 
And I'm like, while he's talking to me, I'm literally texting these guys. Literally, while he's talking to me, I'm like, this guy's so full of shit. <laughs> oh my gosh. Like, I'm never going to, I can't, I hate that. See, to me, this is like, this is like the crux of the, if this is exactly, I think this is what happens more often than not. Yeah. I mean, what happens, I also think, to your point, sometimes you meet these people and they're so nice to your face and like, oh yeah, you know, the, the, it's like these, it's like these blatant, like, this this like Pollyannic words that everyone keeps on saying because they're like the I'm here to support you <laughs> and let me know how I can support you and this and that like it's like this it's like this molasses they vomit on you right <laughs> and it it's so empty and shallow and so like for example for this whole book you know I'm on this whole book launching you know situation right now and it's it's so there's so much anxiety around it and like so much pressure because you you want to be able to go out there and like talk about your book and so you go back to the people that you kind of help uh, promote you know you kind of like collaborate with the same person or this person who you've had on and they they give you some like you know I don't like I'm doing just laundry. a bunch of like doing. basically like a bu- bunch of lies. Weekend. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you know, it's crickets on their end. When you when they need something, they're like all over you, like yeah. you know, like white on rice. And then when you like text them, DM them, it's like they're they've, they're they're gone. There's it's it's such it's such a the, the friendships are so vapid and empty. So it's also bad business because it's such bad because business. If you want to be yeah. and, and the the irony of this is like if you do friend. this. If you do this for the business reasons, it's not going to really, it's not as authentic, obviously. But the irony is you don't know who's on their way up. And so by, you know, big timing people or whatever, later on that person, you know, maybe may may help you out or may have something that you need or whatever. But now you've kind of treated them like shit. You've burned that bridge. You've burned that bridge or kind of treated them like shit. Because people have a long memory. I do anyway, right? Like I may not, I may not call you out right away if I don't know you. Like I've texted you, I've DM'd you, I've called you. And I've gotten zero responses. Okay, fine. But then it's in my head. And more often than not, in my opinion, and what I've always learned is the people who actually end up helping you the most in life are the people you least expect. So never, never just disregard and discard people yeah. that you think are quote unquote below you, right? Like, I remember we talked about this when I was on your show for the first time. I remember the second time. I don't remember. You didn't want to have me on your show. You're like, who is this girl? Yeah, I you told know? you that. Yes, though. I know. You yeah, did tell yeah, me. Yeah. I mean, that's why I, I, I that's we why I like you. We fell in love with you within yeah. two minutes. Yeah. Thank okay, you. I fell in love with you guys too. But like, it's like people have such a myopic and such yeah. a limited, <laughs> like, uh, compar- like uh, uh, ability to see beyond what's right in front of them. Yeah. And, you and I were talking about this, about this book or in general, how it's so easy to compartmentalize somebody or pigeonhole someone and thinking that's their only value in well, life. What's up, everybody? Today's giveaway is MAPS Powerlift. This is a powerlifting MAPS workout program. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel. Turn on notifications. If we declare you the winner, we'll let you know in the comment section. Also, there's only three days left for the at-home holiday workout bundle, which includes all of these incredible workout programs. Now, they they would normally retail you for over $330, but this bundle priced all of them together for $99.99. So if you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below to get set up. All right, here comes the show. Let me ask you this, Jen, because you're... um, I mean, it, it, people who know you know this. Like the more the, the the more you watch you, the more you see what you do, the more remarkable. Oh come on! I know. I'm, Go I, on! No, 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 no! <laughs> no, I swear to God, half the time you should see we're in here and we'll, yes. we'll we'll you know we'll go by your Instagram and see like you interviewed another. And like, how does she do it? Like she meets with the most incredible people. She says she's going to do something. She literally does it. She should have been an X Games athlete, right? Well, listen, that was a surprise, I, I was like, by the way. I know, everyone says that, I'm but so it's mad not. we it's couldn't not. post that clip because you, I well, can't yeah, believe the I, shit that please you Please tell me I should wear pants that. next yeah, time. Oh, come on. I can have the editors. <laughs> I mean, true, true. No. I'll tell you this. I think it's really important that, that's what I'm saying. You, you never should call anyone out because you don't know what's behind closed doors. Do you find that you get underestimated? Oh, my, of lot. course, my whole life I've been under arrest. But Why that's do you think that is? You know what? I don't know. Depends on like what, what bucket I fall into, right? Depending on who I'm talking to and when I'm talking to them, right? So like um, I can be, if I, like, and I'm not saying that I am, but if somebody finds me cute, then she can't be smart, right? Mm. If I'm smart, then I can't be 
uh, athletic, right? Mm. If I'm too athletic and too fit, then I can't be competent, like in other areas. Then I'm only good in fitness. It's like no matter what I'm, if I if I dominate or I'm really good in one thing, then it it it, it lessens the ability in in people's minds that I can be good at something else. Like where is it said or written that I can't? You you, you know, not me only. I'm talking about anybody that you can't be good in more than one thing if you put your mind to it. So to me, it's like, I think you can be good at anything you do if you actually have the discipline and desire to get good at it and practice it. Well, so this is kind of a hallmark of, in my opinion, of your personality is that you, and I, I, I ask you that question because I see that. I see people underestimating you to their folly. Do you, Thank but you've you. Made that. True. You see me, Sal. Well, it's true, me. but <laughs> but you've, you've turned that into a superpower because I feel like it's like they don't they underestimate you, which opens the door for you to go in and do what you're gonna do. And I see you I see you using that because you don't come out and try and be like, I do this, I do that. Never. You're almost like, please underestimate me. So you've turned it into a superpower. That's on purpose, yeah? Well, yeah, it is on purpose because it happens by the way, don't you I feel like sometimes because it's happened so much in my life that um I do feel like I, I constantly have a chip on my shoulder and have and I have something to prove mm. to myself like the most. I don't really give a shit about what someone else feels as much until they actually do that, until they underestimate me. And in my head, like that 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 long memory, I'm like, all right, I'm going to show that person, you know, and I'm going to show them the best way I can by just doing it really well and surpassing them or like being like, hmm, it's happened recently. There's a guy um, that everybody here knows. He's very well known, very well known. He's a nice, He's actually a good person, but he's he has a lot of, um, he's got a lot of accoutrements that he was able to kind of elevate and become like really strong in the, in the, on, in, in the space of motivation, let's okay. say. Right. And, you know, I think he's got good intentions, but sometimes good intentions, was that, was that saying like, sometimes it's like the path to good, uh, hell, the road to yeah, hell is paved with good intentions. Right, right, yeah. right. And so like, you know, we talked about doing this kind of business together or that kind of business. And it never kind of like, it, it constantly like flails, not because of me, but because of that person. And so, you know, what happened is, is I'm like, all right, well, that's not going to, that's not going to work because I'm not going to chase somebody to that point where that I'm constantly going to like rely on that person. I got to rely on myself. So over time, I went and found somebody else that now I'm I'm building this situation with this potential business. And now they come back. They're like, well, what happened? I thought we were going to do this. And the person I'm doing it with is much more successful than that other person. And are like kind of, they're kind of like shocked that's mm -hmm. happening. So I guess that's a long, and it's a very convoluted story to explain something that's pretty simple, which is that it happens all the time. And it's up to you. It's up to me to kind of get, I'm, I'm going to work harder. I'm going to like get to that thing without, without that. And they'll see it themselves. I don't have to like blatantly put it in their face because you got to be so good that they'll notice and recognize you even when you don't have to like blast it in their mm. face. And that's happened time and time again. Yeah. So we talked off air about this book because you, you've, this is what book number four, Five? Four. Four. But in a different different Right. Area. The other books were all fitness. Uh, all fitness. All would fitness you, based. Would you say this is like an extension of the TED Talk? It is an extension of the TED okay. Talk. For sure. Like, And that's another example. I do that TED Talk. <laughs> Even you laughed at me about that. <laughs> uh, the secret to getting anything you want. You laughed. You laughed. You laughed. You laughed. <laughs> did, you, did you really? Uh, yeah. She's like, what's this whole bold yeah. thing? He was like, remember? I should have used the word tenacious or something. Yeah. yeah. No, no, yeah. No, you, you, it would have been received better. No, you actually used the right this word because it's about being bold. Well, it's on the book it's long memory, now, Adam. Yeah. Long <laughs> memory. But no, no, no. What? Why I'm bringing that up is that... Um, I didn't think in a million years even that that TED Talk was going to become as popular as it did. And it went viral. And there's like millions. I think it's at 5 million now on just YouTube. Wow. Um, uh, and like tons of engagement on this whole idea of being bold. And tons. I, I've, I think I've had like thousands, thousands of people who've contacted me about that. Like DMs, companies, uh, colleges, students that like whatever I was saying resonated to a point where it actually like turned into this book because the message I think is that is exactly that, that like be, be bold. It's bold. Being bold is more important than being smart, you know, putting yourself out there, blah, 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 blah. Um, 
Do you yeah. find that this huh. resonates uh, more with women than with men? Actually, it's 50-50 because the idea behind it is it's the idea behind the the whole idea of being bold is that don't allow your self-doubt or don't allow the fear of failure to stop you from trying. Mm. And that could be that's universal. And that doesn't that has no gender to it. Yeah. Right. Like a lot of and this is, by the way, it's not just professionally. It's not just like the job. It's about it's not just the job. It's about personal life, like a lot of guys or not just girls end up dating and getting married to somebody that like that you know that like are okay they're not crazy about just because it was they're acquiescing to what's available or like that person's good enough and because they're not putting themselves out there or they're not actually like chasing what they really truly want authentically <clears throat> and the idea of behind my entire platform and message is like how to have a rich life and it's not rich with finance. It's not like, oh, how do I get a plane and how do I make more money? It's about how do you actually like live in a way that like is actually fulfilling and satiating in a, in a real way. That's with like experiences and relationships and job. Like, look at you, you guys are like literally an exa like a perfect example of somebody or people that are doing that like day in, day out. You guys are best friends. So you get to see your best friend every day doing exactly what you love, talking about exactly what you love in a place that you love. Like how many people are able to like say that they are, they created that life for themselves in a purpose, in, in a way that's been like on purpose. You guys were on purpose doing that, you know, like you, and you don't compromise. Yeah. You don't comp like everything is done in like the, the way you want to do it. Yeah, uh, we feel very blessed for it. But, you know, the, the the challenge with being bold or, or as you said, taking those chances, right, taking those risks is the the fear of, yeah, of- Being subjected to ridicule. Yeah, or failure or ridicule. Because if I put my real self out there, like if I really put my real self out there and it gets rejected, I have nothing to, I can't go back and protect myself. Be like, well, that wasn't really me. Or I didn't really try my heart. Like I lost the race, but I wasn't running as hard as I could. Like I went as hard as I could and I still lost. And that a lot of people can't deal with. And so I, and I know, I know what as you're bold saying. as you are, or as many chances as you've, as you've taken, for sure you've had to have failed a bunch of times. There's no way you could succeed at everything. Well, I failed more than <laughs> I've succeeded. That's, How do you deal with that? So there's a couple of things you said. First of all, there's a big difference in my opinion between um, being bold and taking a, and, and, and risk. Risk and bold is different okay. to me. I feel like, Bold is, I mean, I think you got to, you got to take risks that are not, uh, that are, that are, are, are like intelligent risk, right? Like if Calculated. you have a family of four, right? You're not going to quit your job to more, today and just like hope for the best, right? You got to put yourself in a situation. You got to put your in, yourself in a situation to win or uh, like things don't just happen just through osmosis, right? You got to put yourself in opportunities happen when you put yourself in a place where you can win mm. and you're constantly putting, it's not as simple as that. Bold, so you're not advocating for people to make just, Oh, bold. Okay, cool. It's I, not just yeah, like my, 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 my idea is that it, it, be smart about putting yourself in not just opportunities, but aligning yourself in places where you have the potential to increase your chances, right? Mm -hmm. I don't think that, I think it's about being, being around the right people. It's about taking small steps. You don't have to go from zero to 60, but I think being bold is being honest with yourself, taking like a mental check of like, or like a self, a self-awareness check and saying, okay, where am I, where, where do I want to be in my life? And where am I right now? And what are the steps I need to get there? That's what I'm talking about. It's like, if you want to be a basketball player, right? An NBA basketball player and you are five one. Yeah. But you know what? Maybe that's not the best. I mean, maybe you shouldn't quit your job tomorrow and just, you know, say, you know what? I'm going to become an NBA. Like I, I th think about like, well, you know what? I like basketball. What am I good at? Would I be good at maybe should, what, can I work for a team? What, you know, or should I, can I, can I, can I be a, per, can I be a strength and conditioning coach? Could I do this? Like be, be somewhat like open-minded and creative and have, pick a self, pick, not, you don't need to even have an exact 
destination, but like have a, a direction. That's my point. And being realistic with what your strengths are and what your weaknesses are. Stay in that, stay in that lane. How many times have you done something where you went into it with this intent, it was going to look a certain way. And then it ended up being completely different than what you imagined it to be. So, so right. So that's my, that was what I was going to actually say is that my whole premise is that you have to at least try, right? Like you have to make attempts at at least going after in the direction that you're interested and passionate about. And Actually, the truth is nine out of 10, a lot of times it's going to fail. You're, most, of, most of my life, whatever I actually went for, I never actually got. But another opportunity presented itself that I never even knew existed by even going down those steps and going down that path. So my whole point is don't just count yourself out before even trying. That's my point. Don't just say, oh, uh, I'm not good at that or uh, why me or why should that happen to me? I'm like, act as if you're the act as if, why not? Like I've, I just, I turned, I turn, I, I turn it around and saying, you know, if it can happen to Joe Blow and it can happen to that person or this person, why can't it happen to me? But you gotta, you gotta put yourself in a place to win. So that's, that's the point. No, I love, well, I love that analogy and even using the basketball one, for example, and let's use the five, one type of character of going to like, listen, I, deep down, I want to be a basketball player so bad, but I'm open to whatever it takes. I'll be the ball boy. I'll clean the floors. I'll do anything to be around I'll that start environment. start a media channel that talks about right. NBA. And, or- and, right. And, and deep down, I hope they see me and they see my talent. I get an opportunity, but what's maybe what might happen is I end up being a strength and conditioning coach, or maybe I end up being this, which by the way, the, the, the guy who is the, the VP for the Warriors started as the like assistant ball boy guy who's now walking around with the well, ring and sitting courts. I met him last time I was at the game. So, you know, there's an example of somebody who probably had no idea it was going to end up being that they, for him, they right? They probably didn't. Like, I, I, this is, put yourself in the vicinity of what you're interested in. That's basically the bottom line. Like, put yourself in the vicinity. Like, you're not going to go on that NBA court and, and start, like, you know, getting three pointers, but at least, like, work within that area mm. and, like, you, you will kind of, like, you will find your way. So, that's what I've done my whole life. Like, that's my point. And I feel like to you, what you're saying is that, yeah, if you fail and the and then people feel, oh, well, then it, it kind of brings you da- back down and like get you worse down that that black hole or rabbit hole. So you got to practice the idea of failure. Like to me, make it make yourself immune to failure. So it doesn't it de- you become. Dis- I, I guess I would say desensitize yourself to failure. How do you do that? Now is this such like a mental game, or just because you try? And I then- think I think it's a ment- I think it's a lot of things. I think you you become desensitized to failure when you fail a lot. So I'm going to tell you something that's really interesting. Okay, so last year I did a talk at MIT, right? And at, the talk was about resilience. And what I found super interesting, I'm like, this is. I had to talk to people who are literally the best in the world, the smartest right? People the, in the world. smartest people in the world go to MIT, right? And here I am in f- talking <laughs> to the smartest people in the world about failing. I'm like, the irony was not lost on me yeah. for a moment, right? Like, you know, in fact, I got there and the lineup was me plus five other people, right? And I brought my husband along to this thing and I'm looking at the bios of the people. The person speaking right before me was um, a Harvard scientist, an MIT graduate, also Harvard, MIT, uh, was best best inventor of the year, not once, but twice by Time Magazine, Um, uh, uh, Time Magazine, most influential uh, in the hundred most influential people in the world. Uh, has had cup, two companies. One was sold under six months for $180 million. And I go on and on, okay? This, and this, How, and what's this, going through your stomach okay, when you're this, reading? And, I'm like, this is and a And you got to follow that guy? I was like, yeah. So and I'm following him. He was the first to speak and I was number two, okay? I read his bio and uh, I'm like, is this a fucking joke? I'm like, I'm like, is this a joke? Like, how did this, ha- like, how did they pick me? Like, why am I here? Like, I was, and so the guy was standing beside me and he's like, what do you do? This is what the guy says to me. His name's David. And the story gets better. And I'm like, 
what do I do? I'm like, a whole lot of nothing compared to you. That's for sure. <laughs> oh, I forgot to tell you. He, this is the best part. He's like, he, he's Which, like, hey, by the way, okay, that's, you just, you just went over that really fast, but that's such an endearing and, 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 and brilliant thing to say to a person like that. Right? Only because you and caught it, you know, because you know. Of course, yeah. because yeah. The, the, the natural reaction to almost any human would be feel insecure in that moment. Oh, I do this. And then to overcompensate yeah, what tires. you do. Oh, yeah. I, I've written four books and I have this podcast. 100%. And I talk to all these people, but the fact that you, you still have the humility in that situation and know to do that is, is brilliant. Thank you. Yeah. I, I, first of all, the fact that you stopped me at that moment, I'm not surprised because I, I, I feel that a part, of, a lot of part of like emotional intelligence is knowing your audience and 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 understanding understanding the the place you're in, right? Like, kind of like know the room, right? And if I were to try to like outdo that guy, I look like an ass, yeah. right? So at that moment, like the only place for me to go is to be self-deprecating, right? So knowing the room that you're in and knowing kind of like picking up on cues is so vital to success and likability, I think. Yeah, Right. agreed. Right, so if someone's gonna, if, when people do that with me in general, right? When they try to like, like outdo like, oh, I'm this, I'm that. It's like such a turnoff. I have no interest in like, I don't care how successful you are or, or how unsuccessful you are. To me, that's a turnoff. I think humility is very underrated. Anyway, so I say to this guy, you know, whatever, blah, 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 like it's obvious. And I didn't tell you this part. He also was the guy who created the cure or the, um, uh, what do you call it? The antidote or is it true? Yeah, yeah, to SARS and like he works oh, with, and like to all these other like ailments. He was like the he's like the number one guy in like lung capacity. It's like it's like insane, okay? So he, and then, and so he's asked me what I do, and I'm like, well, you know, whatever. I do a squat, I do a lunge, I know how to do a plank <laughs> once in a while, you know what I mean? Like laughing. And he's, you know, he kind of has a sense of humor, but he's, you know, he's kind of a little bit more standoffish. And then um and then he talks and then I, I talk and the idea, why well, two points I'm going to try to make. The first point about MIT, what I wanted to roll back and I'll get back to David, is that why they had this talk about resilience and failure at MIT is because those people never fail. Mm. Right. And so when this they shocking to them, so when they fail, their fall is way harder. That makes sense. Right. And so that's 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 my perspective. <laughs> so they picked you. They're like, let's <laughs> right. scale the wall. So listen, to, I'm, 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 this is all going to circle back Perfect. and make a lot of sense. I promise you. Okay, <laughs> I know I'm going in a lot of different directions, but let's stay in this whole We're vicinity of MIT because mm -hmm. there's a lot of good points that I want to make. The first one is that they have the highest suicide rate. MIT. Yes. Interesting. Because, right. Because people because they don't want to fail, and so when they fail. It's like gut wrenching, yeah, and sure. they don't know how to, they don't know how to like to, to deal with it yeah. and process it, right? You know, you know what I did, Jen, with that is that with my kid who did does really well in certain subjects, he had the opportunity to do an, a a class that would challenge him versus one that was right. easier. I definitely encourage him to do one. I said I'd rather you get a C in this challenging class than an A in this other easy class. I agree 100. And and I know it's okay. It might be get easier to get in college with the A, but with the C. He's going to get his ass kicked a little bit, and that's valuable. It's super valuable. And this is, we'll talk about that actually. I talk about that in my book. Okay. This whole coddle culture nonsense that goes on in this world is unbelievable. Everyone wins a participation trophy. No parent wants their kid to fail when failure is, par is a part of life. Mm -hmm. And if they don't learn how to fail early, it's going to be detrimental to their life yes. later on. And this is a, by the way, that's a whole podcast in itself. Mm -hmm. But so that's why at, at MIT, that, so my whole thing was that, because I've failed so many times, like I have literally uh, a master's in failing, but a PhD in getting myself right back up. And that's what I said to them at the beginning. I'm like, that's why I'm here to talk to you mm -hmm. is because it's be I've become so desensitized that now I don't give a shit. I can try anything. And if I, if I lose, if I fail, if I get rejected, I don't care. I'm going to try again. I'm coming right back. I'm coming right back because I've become so immune 
to failing. It's like nothing to me. It's like drinking water, having lunch, you know, like it doesn't matter. It's the people that are always winning that have the problem who are the ones who overthink things, who are the ones who can't get up when they fail. Mm -hmm. And that's why in life, a lot of these people who've become extraordinarily successful in their life, they had a lot of challenges when they were younger. They weren't the people who were the smartest. They weren't the people that were the prettiest and the most this or the most that. They didn't win every single award. They had to learn how to be resourceful and learn how to like brush themselves back, you know, brush themselves off and get right back up when they won or or when they didn't win because they had to. And the, and the only way to do this that I can think of, and I, I love your input on this, is to do it, right? You can't get, you know, develop this immunity, right, to failure unless you failed a bunch of times. That's, a, well, that's the only way to do so it. So basically it's wherever you're at, because someone may be listening who's super talented. They're like, well, I'm just good at everything. Well, you haven't tried hard enough. You well, haven't tried hard enough. You haven't gone out and put yourself in positions where you could potentially fail. Well, I worry about those people because the people who don't fail at all and who are supposedly good at everything, they're usually coasting a lot of times yeah. in life and their life becomes very much like this. There's, they, they're, they never, they're not the ones who are going to like really kind of like just go, they're never going to like go exceed and go right for the, right for the, right for the moon because they don't feel like they need to. They haven't learned that, bit, that, that need to be gritty, that need to be like, you know, thinking out of the box and how to be resourceful or how to be, uh, how, how to kind of, you know, figure shit out when things go wrong. And in life, it's, things go wrong. Nothing for, and, and, and I don't care who you are. There's not one person in life, in my opinion, it's not even my opinion. It's a fact. It's a fact. Yeah. Who in life has never had hardship somewhere? And if you don't learn that hardship at some point, when you do fall and when you do have, you know, some something, God forbid, happening, you don't know how, you don't have the, you don't have the wherewithal and the ability to deal with it. Mm. Like you need to have tools and you, you learn those tools by being kind of mediocre like when you're young or, or just average enough, like to me, you know, I think my, my, one of my biggest superpowers was I was just kind of average in a lot of ways. So in order for me to kind of stick, you know, kind of like shine in anything, I had to really work hard for it. I, you know, like nothing came easy to me. So I had to learn how to like, to your point, like Everything I'm, I'm, I'm okay at is because I had to put in like a lot of, a lot of practice, a lot of man hours and like create whatever this is. You know what I mean? Like I wasn't born fit. I, I had to like put tons of hours into it and then I became fit and then I had to maintain the fitness. And it's like, it's like once you get there, then you have to kind of maintain it. But this idea that things just should have come naturally. And if like, I'm entitled to have this success or I'm entitled to, to be, you know, fit, I'm entitled, you know, I, I should be this. No, it doesn't work that way. So I Jen, what do you, what are your thoughts then on, because this, is a, this I feel like this is a, an interesting topic that we hear a lot about, like you feel um, the the oppression Olympics, and everybody talks about privilege. Yeah, this is, a, this is, a, this is very uh, relevant culturally right now. This this this, this particular discussion, and sure. and I yeah. right, but we talked a little bit about with Max. I recently talked about on the show. I got some you know pushback from the audience and stuff like that because I made comments about. You know, I find it really interesting that we just assume that having all the money, having all the opportunity, going to all the best schools, winning all the time is such a place of privilege. And in fact, maybe it's more a place of privilege to come from not having a lot because what you had to overcome. So what are your thoughts around this, the, the culture and how we feel about privilege? And we talk about all oh, this. Well, that's because he's so privileged. Like, what are your thoughts on that? So I think there's a there's a lot to unpack with that, right? Because I've seen it all the time that, and that's, I guess I do have a little bit of a chip on my shoulder again. I got a lot of chips on my shoulder apparently, but because I do feel that it's a lot of things in life are quote unquote unfair, right? But life's not fair where someone can have a deck that's stacked way better than another person, right? But the first question becomes, well, what's success to you? right? Is it that because you were positioned in a family that had some money, a lot, a lot of money, so you're able to go to these great schools and therefore have the alumni to then help each other to make a lot of money, that's fine. But is, is that what your goal in life is? Is it just if money? If, like, if you have a lot of money, does that 
make you have a rich life. No, that just makes you fucking rich. Doesn't make you rich in the soul or spiritually or mentally satiated. It makes you rich. So to me, that's not interesting, right? To me, that's not enough. Now, I do believe that I doesn't matter what my hand is. It, it, so it doesn't matter what your hand is. I have to play the hand I'm given anyway. And so I have to think, and this is where the self-awareness thing comes up. What is important to me to have a successful life? What is important to me for, to feel that I have a rich life? And then I got to pl play the hand I'm given and make it the best possible. I do believe though, that um, with that being said, that a lot of what bothers me when people are given so much privilege and then they, and then they don't like utilize it well. I really can't stand that. Yeah, they squander it. Uh, lazy, talented people. Lazy, really, really hard. To, it's really hard for me to see. Lazy ta or people who don't appreciate like that. The lazy, talented person or the person who is given everything and they're they think that they just, they they earned it. Like that, that place, like I've, yeah. that's why I see a lot in LA, right? A lot of these people who, will, who th they feel in th the entitlement of like when they don't even earn it, they were just given it. And then they're not doing anything more with it, I guess is a, a, a problem. But I, I think this comes down to this whole coddle culture mentality where people are just like are, are way too protected in this world and given everything. I think there's something to be said for, I don't care if, if I'm making a lot of money, I'm doing, I'm doing a disservice to my kid if I just hand everything to them. Well, you can, you can try all you want to make life perfectly safe uh, for your kids, or you can make them tough so that they can the go question out into is how the life. Do you, the question is, what does that mean, right? So like, I feel that it, like to what we were talking about before, is that you have to teach your children that they're not going to always win and that they are going to fail and that they have to be resilient. And like, they're going to have to, they should work, work ethic, whatever happened to work ethic in everything in life. Right. It doesn't matter. Like, I feel like these kids who have, who, who are given everything, the great schools and the money and da, 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 you lose that, that like, that like fight to do it yourself. And what I was going to say about that, so now you have a lot of money, right? You get to go to the schools, you have the alumni, you have all these things, all these to, to, to position yourself for, for what, what's considered in society to be successful. But does that necessarily build character? And when you don't do it yourself, you don't think that plays on someone's self-esteem long-term. I know a lot of people who were given a lot of shit and are super considered successful because they were positioned to be successful. But deep down, you know, you know, if you did it by yourself, right. you know what you were given, you know, if you know how resilient you really are. And I think that in order to be really confident and to have a true sense of self and self-esteem, you have to be able to have self-efficacy to know that you could do it on your own. When did you figure when did you figure this out about failing? Cuz I'm sure when you were younger the when first I, few times. When time, I failed. Well, yeah, well, <laughs> I mean the the first few times, I mean it sucked. I mean it, I'm, I'm sure it sucked. Can you can you think back to like the first time when you really like you failed at something you're like, "Oh, this well, sucks. I was never a great student. Number one, I was a terrible student, and I would and math was like it was such an embarrassment. Uh, so I failed at math. But I think one of the things that happened to me actually was um, you're gonna, you know, dancing at the time. I don't know. I'm not a bad dancer, but at the time, let's see. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, t we'll do it later. We'll dance together later. I think I've gotten better, see, because I it was such a traumatic experience <laughs> just practice, that I practiced and practiced, and now I'm like the best dancer. No, I'm not. But I took that en energy into into fitness, and so that's that's when that opportunity came. So when I was younger, I think I was like 12 or 13. We all there was like a dance troupe called the High. Uh, dance ensemble and the high dance ensemble was like Israeli dancing because I'm Israeli and it was like the, what everyone wanted to do so like all my friends we all would try it. We, we all tried out literally all my friends got in but me oh. I was the only one who didn't get in it was like humiliating right and I couldn't believe it. And so like they would go practicing every day and and they would, you know, they would like talk about it. And like it built a lot of like, you know, uh, camara uh, camaraderie, camaraderie yeah. right? Because they were like experienced this thing together. And I was like not involved. So that's basically I was like, oh, my God, this is so terrible. I can't believe it. 
and I, how, I'm like such a loser. And then one day, uh, I decided, you know what? Okay, I've got they're out they're after school. They're doing all this high dancing, you know, doing whatever they're doing in Israeli dance. And there was a new gym that will uh, that opened up near my house called Shapes. It was a women's. It was like a women's all women's gym. And I'm like, you know, what? I'm gonna go in there and see what's happening. And I took like an aerobics class, like a step aerobics class. And I'm like, okay, I'm like, maybe I should just do this. And so I went again and then I went again. And then I'm like, here, there's a Stairmaster. And then slowly but surely, I started to like really like get into like this whole fitness thing. And I started to like notice myself, like my body was changing. I was like, oh my God, I'm getting really, A, I'm getting strong. And I feel strong physically, which then I feel mentally more strong. And then I'm like, I really like this step aerobics thing. Maybe I can teach aerobics. So then I went to get my little, you know, certification for like, for like group fitness. Right. And then now I'm like teaching aerobics at the place. So my failure turned into a lifelong win, right? The, the one thing, like the one thing I was rejected at, i am like, it gave me that opportunity to find a true passion, which then led to like my entire life of like health and fitness stuff. Right. So I became an aerobics instructor. I became super fit. And then everyone was looking at me differently. They're like, wow, like where did those abs come from? And like, why is your ass so tight like that? And I'm like, (laughs) and so like, I felt like it totally transformed my entire being, right? Like all my friends were like doing like pot de berets in their dance class. And I'm like getting really, really fit. And it like took my life in a whole different trajectory. So my, I guess my, the point is that sometimes your your biggest failure ends up being your biggest success, and that's I, the, and that's the truth. I that's, think one of the the challenges that people have with that is they they tend to like uh, seek what they're passionate about. And like let's say you like you were really passionate about dancing like that, and then when the dancing fails, yes. they shut down. Versus being open minded to like, well, what you were like, okay, well, they're busy. They're busy now. I have nothing to do with that time. Let me put that time somewhere else. And then it led to this lifelong success for you. So or I, what's I, next? Like you try, I think it's about putting yourself places where you try a lot. If you don't know what you don't know. Right. That's the bottom. You don't, you don't know what you don't know. Like you have to try a lot of shit to know what you like and what you don't like. It's like in fitness. How many times do you guys get asked the same question? Like, you know, what's the best thing to do, yeah. you know, for fat loss, right. for muscle gain, for this, or like, what's the best form of exercise to lose weight? I get that question a ton still. And it's like the thing that you're going to do the most. If you hate something, you're never going to do it, right? So find something that you like. And it becomes a beginning of trial and error in life, right? Just trying and seeing and doing. But just because something didn't work out for you, like the whole thing is like if a door closes, find a window. And if that window's shut, look for another window Mm -hmm. or then dig a hole if that doesn't work. Like you have to be resourceful. Like I cannot stress enough the importance of being resourceful and learning how, you know, when things don't, when, when things zig and you have to sometimes zag, it just is life. I think, I think that's because we look at failure as, as such a negative thing. Like I learned to to reframe failure as actually a positive thing. It means I I quickly got to my answer. Like, oh, I'm not good at that. On to the next yes. thing. Or, oh, that doesn't work. On to the next thing. Versus, oh my God, identifying as the failure. Like, I think we attach ourselves to this thing that, we, that we're pursuing. And then when it fails, we now go, oh, I'm a failure. Like, no, I just failed at that thing. It wasn't for me. On to the next On thing. On to the next and thing. And so you, I have to, you have to ref- reframe how you look at failing. And I've, I actually learned to look at it as almost a positive thing. And I began, I remember for me, in my early 20s, I read this article because I was very money motivated when I was young. And I, I I wanted to be a millionaire, right? Because that was a big deal back then, right? To be a to be a millionaire. And I remember reading. Now you want to be a billionaire? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I actually, don't give a shit about that With so much anymore. Man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember reading that the average millionaire had nine failures before they get to ten. And I'm totally. at this time, I'm only like 22, and I'm like, oh shit, I've only failed at like one or two things. Like so, then my attitude was. I got to hurry up and fail seven more times <laughs> if I'm Thank even going to be in that statistic. Right. So I think that, that, that really helped uh, shape and reframe well, how I well, looked at failure as a kid. Well, Who's I, more likely to be successful? The person who identifies with 
success or the person who identifies with tenacity, right? Or the person uh -huh. who identifies with resilience. Like if you identify as a resilient person rather than a successful person, you're going to go much further. I totally agree. I also want to say sitting in a room full of people who like take fitness seriously, the uh, how that has shaped our lives, right? Because I think fitness for me has give, gave me the, the the fundamentals to really feel like I can go out totally. and conquer my life, right? Because it give it it teaches you goal setting. It shows you when you actually have a goal and you actually get to that place. It you then feel the confidence to keep on going. It teaches you like discipline and and, and it's an all incubator the incubator for self growth. Yeah, a hundred percent. It's it's no it's it's not really a coincidence, right? That a lot of people who have become extraordinarily successful are also the same people who have taken some form of of, of fitness seriously. You know, like eat, these are like these are like building blocks for real true success in you're, life. You're speaking my mm. language, and and part of the reason I mean it teaches you self acceptance. You talked about, Absolutely. you know, working with the cards that you sacrifice, were dealt. like yeah, it, sacrifice. 100%. Yeah. You stick to it long enough and you're like, well, I'm not going to look like the person in the magazine, but I'm going to keep going anyway. Or I suck at this, but let me keep practicing this exercise and then I'll get better at it. Oh, this hurts. Oh, wait a minute. That's part of like what makes my body improve. Oh, I have to do this every single day. I can't just do some of it and then stop it. But here's what makes it really powerful. It's nobody realizes they're about to enter into this journey of personal growth. Totally. Everybody's like, I want nice abs. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, what I think and how I look about, how I look at fitness in my head is that it is literally a microcosm of, 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 of life, totally. of like of life outside of that. And what you can, what you learn and truly like in a, in a real way, in, in a, in a true way is life transform like that is to me life transformative right there and people who don't know mm -hmm. don't know like that's why you have to go on that journey and like I, I always say that like if it wasn't for fitness that I would never have been able to have done and go after and strive the way I have because I would never have had those building blocks because I don't care what you say. When you look in that mirror and you feel physically strong and you know you're strong and you did that because you did it, no one can give it to you. Yep. It's not, that's the one thing in life that you have to do on your own, right? Your mom, your rich mom, your rich dad, they can't be, they can't go zazoom. Yeah. You're now super fit, you know, like with all the okay, people with all the money in the world, they can have every nutritionist, personal trainer, whatever. Mm -hmm. But if you don't do the work on mm -hmm. your own, not going to happen. And if you don't learn along the way, and if you don't learn self-acceptance, you know, it's, uh, it, I used to get clients that would ask me like, well, what happens after I get in shape? Like, well, you got to keep going. You got to keep going. To stay that way. But, um, or, but even then you have to also accept that you age. You have to accept that I'm not going to be, right? Well, everybody, right? <laughs> everybody does. You have to, Slowly. You, it's, it's, it's a total process of self-acceptance, growth, work, tenacity if you stick to it long enough. And again, I love it because nobody knows that when they go into it. You figure that out like five to 10 years later. Nobody right? knows it. Like yeah. when I started and you started, it's like, you're like, hey, I just, you know. Yeah, I want I've to have got, nice biceps. I, exactly. Or I've got, you know, let me just, I've got nothing else to do right now. Let me try it. But it's like the neuroplasticity, your brain, like there's something that happens in the process where truthfully, your neuro, the neuroplasticity in your brain literally changes. Yeah. Like the way you think changes. It is unbelievable. But that's why I tell people, I can only tell you so much. You now have to go and like the sensei, like you have to now go and do the work. Mm -hmm. And then if you stick to it long enough, like anything in life, you will see and reap the, you will reap the results and not just physically. Like to me, and I, and I was, was going to say this, it's not like, it's not just physical, right? Like it's like you said, it may start with that might be your, that might be your, your starting point, but what you get out of it mentally and, and, and life, like life is way beyond that. Yeah. I, well, if I had you list your top five reasons for exercise, I bet you looking fit wouldn't be the top, wouldn't be in the top. No, I, it, Might even be the, the way, top five. when I was 17, maybe, right. but no, for me now it is, if I don't do that, like to me, it's it, cognitively, like what it does for my brain, it like put my brain on super charge. So like I may have, my brain may have been like kind of maybe like 
sluggish maybe at mm. some point when I was younger. I don't know. But now it's like on supercharge, right? And I'm going to tell you something funny actually after that. But the, my my mood, my energy, like you said, when I walked in here, yeah. like I'm 105, right? And I'm still like going at a pace that I feel is like, you know, 16. But like the mood, your your my cognitive abilities to kind of like put things together, right? If I When I don't work out, I feel like my brain becomes literally sluggish, even if I don't sleep. Like if, if I'm not sleeping that well and not working out, oh, it's yeah. a, it's a, it's a nightmare. I'm a different person. I'm a different person, yeah. but I still have, even if I'm not sleeping that great, I still have to put the work in on the fitness side to have my brain be optimized yeah, Totally. in my, in my opinion. I don't use that as an excuse. I don't say, Oh, I'm too, t I never say that because Energy begets energy. People don't understand that either. The more the when I work out, I get way more energy, not less energy, mm -hmm. right? So that's my first thing. I think my brain, the cognitive powers that you get from the fitness is unstoppable. Yeah. I wanted to bring it back and kind of tie in our conversation in the beginning about authenticity. And I had a thought in terms of like why that uh, irritates us so much when we meet people that aren't quite as authentic. And just because of like all these points bringing up of like the work involved, like it's, it takes a lot of courage to present your authentic self. It takes a lot of work to even find your authentic self and to be able to present that to other people. Uh, and, and in terms of like, you know, taking those steps and becoming, you know, bolder, like we, we know, uh, what we went through to get to this point. Right. And so is it, is that something that resonates in terms of like, you know, why that, that there's such nails on a chalk bar when you meet some fake person that, you know, maybe they used, you know, PEDs or, or whatever, and they're not being like honest about it. Yeah. I mean, to be honest with you is that it really rubs me the wrong way. And when people, I mean, I don't care what someone's doing physically. What bothers me when someone portrays something that's so yeah. contrary to what they portray, right? And people who are disingenuous to me is like my biggest pet peeve. Well, one of my biggest pet peeves. And it's because you're right. I think that I'm, I feel comfortable in my own skin that I don't, I feel like, you know, I'm not for everybody, you know, like some people like chocolate, some people like vanilla, some people like strawberry. I don't try to have, my, my goal in life isn't for every single person to like me. My goal in my life is for me to like me and be comfortable with who I am. And I feel like every pot has a lid, right? There's some pots that have lid that, you know, there's, there's some sometimes- Some pots you can smoke. So. Well, exactly, some pot you can smoke, exactly. Wow. I feel like- <laughs> I feel when people try to be everything to everyone, that's when they start to have like, that's that to me. If, if you don't have, this is, the, this might be sound controversial, but if you don't have any enemies, you've never really spoken the truth. It's How is that fact. even yeah. controversial? I think that's, listen, like I think right now in the world that we're in right now, it is, to, I, what's happening is insane to me. Can we talk about that for a second? Yeah, if you want to. You yeah, I know. Say, oh, are you mean, sure you want to wind this up? I don't to know. Depress I us mean, all again. First, if you I, were an ice cream, what would you be, by the way, since you made the ice cream? I all do right. like chocolate. What would you be, though, if you were ice cream? You I'm definitely be, not vanilla. You're not vanilla or chocolate. No. You'd be, you'd be I would else, say like, maybe uh, Jamocha. I like I like Jamocha. <laughs> Jamocha. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> or like or Rocky Road. I'd say uh, Rocky yeah, Road. Very what would you be? Mint bubblegum. Oh, I almost got it. Oh, mint chip. Why mint chip? Well, because you, I don't know, you either love me or hate me. You know, oh. and and I'm different. I'm not. I'm definitely not vanilla or chocolate. Definitely not yeah. vanilla. Or but I'm likable, and I can grow on you. It's like if you're not, you never really like. <laughs> right. So if you, he's, it's, he's still ice cream. I, I still yeah. like that. That's great. So that's and so that you're right because mint chip. Not everyone loves it, but some people like really are obsessed it. with yeah. it. I'm obsessed with mint chip. So that is so. Yeah. So do you think most people <laughs> like Rocky Road or not really? That Rocky Road's right there with mint chip. I think. I think so. Too. Yeah, I yeah. think so too because yeah. either people can like really get into it or or they're like not I don't so like much. the chunky bits. Or yeah. yeah, yeah. Like it's not like bland enough. But if you love it, you mm. love it. But if, yeah. yeah, and it can grow on you. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm a sore baby because I can't have dairy. <laughs> oh, you're sore baby. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah, I'm bubble gum because it's fun <laughs> and uh, fun? sophisticated people won't eat it. I feel like you'd be <laughs> coffee. Uh, I feel like you're like coffee. <laughs> coffee. Oh, you I, I, love I love coffee. I love coffee. I love coffee. I love coffee. Oh my god, that's my. I would say coffee ice cream. I'm gonna change it because I love coffee ice cream, and I feel like most people love it, but there are a few who don't. Uh, yeah. Have you tried? But they uh, can get. They can get there. What's that one? What's it called? <laughs> what's that thing that you guys always get? A, a, a fogato? Is that the one with yeah. the coffee oh, yeah, ice cream? Avogato. Avogato. Coffee. Avogato. 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 Yeah. Have you had that? that? Coffee yeah. ice cream. It's like coffee, it's ice, cream. Like coffee it's like ice cream with espresso. 
poured on. Oh, it. that sounds delicious. It's, yeah. So yeah. it's like sugar, it's caffeine. You're just all the stuff I ready. Yeah. I by the way, can you believe that we've never worked out together? Yeah, we, 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 we never work out together. Yeah, we, we never work out to each yeah. other. Oh, really? I yeah, you guys people always, always think that. They're like, oh, you guys get to work out with your oh, best friends. I'm like, we never work out together. I thought no. you guys always I can count do. on one hand in, in oh, eight years, myself. we've all worked out together. I think we've only all really? genuinely worked out together maybe three times. Just in the less, beginning. Less than five Shut times. up. Yeah. 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 You know why? You, why? You wanna, you wanna, you're well, probably wondering why. I'm way well, too strong yeah, for I'm Sally. Really, I'm, yeah, why? What? I'm way too strong for Sally. Yeah, you that, probably are. That's really exactly. Too. By, by the way, you're, you're not honest. You know, I beat him to that. I knew that's what he was going to say. No, that's what I'm going to say. Okay, what are you going to say? I'm too strong say? for these guys. Huh? No, well, there's two, because we all have very uh, personal relationships with fitness. So number one, so we all want to do our own workout. Yeah, I totally None of us get like that. to follow anyone else's workout. Totally. Yeah. So like, what'll happen is we'll start working out together. He's gonna want to do one yeah. thing. I don't have gonna, any mirrors at my. I'll gym. do another thing. Whatever. You know what's really funny? I get anxious sometimes when people always say, "Hey, want to work out together?" And I'm always like, uh, "Okay." You can follow and my I, workout. I, exa exactly. <laughs> when we and I go and we meet to. other fitness people, that's they always want to do that. We always avoid it. Yeah, always. I don't right? think we've ever. I think we worked out with Ben Pakulski. was the only person we ever worked out with. No one else. We've ever they worked get out so with. mad because they want the hero video. It's you know, so true, though, right? Yeah, you guys want to meet up and work out tomorrow we're like eh, nah, not yeah, really exactly yeah. <laughs> I think I'm gonna sleep in tomorrow 100%, go or do it or do your own work I mean I just feel like I know what I like and what works for me yeah, I don't yeah. want someone else although I'm supposed to be going to Nashville to work out with Gunnar Peterson oh he has he do you know who he is yeah, have you ever had him on this no, the podcast no oh, okay. he's a, he's like you a interview? celebrity trainer right yeah no I haven't yeah, interviewed I was gonna make, I was gonna do a guy. podcast while I'm there but he has he built up this like 5,000 square foot gym in Nashville he used to have this crazy gym like near my house mm -hmm. Uh, but now he moved. But I, I, he has so many toys there, like so much shit. It's like crazy. Yeah, I'll never work out with a fitness influencer because I 100. It's an. It's going to be a like. Let me show you my. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's not like that, but yeah, but Stupid. yeah. Stupid. And that's the other reason why we don't work out is our because we all are competitive. Yeah. And I know what well, happened. Look at you. As Jesus. soon as we see what you just did, you just yeah. you just started living. I know. Well, okay, but I but you're wearing a t-shirt, a tight tight t-shirt. Yeah. yeah. He also so does push ups in the bathroom too. Shirt. Did he? Yeah. Before you got here, I did what? Oh Although I see your vid. I see you. You're crazy fit. Yeah. Like sick fit. You you have a great squat. You can squat better than anybody. Oh, thank, ever you. thank you. Thank he you. He has. He's yeah. squat. And by the way, he's why she's so good at yeah, yeah. making yeah, relationships. Yeah, yeah. Feed the ego. Feed the ego. No, you got I, but, beautiful. By the way, will you guys promote my book for the next three weeks too? <laughs> and by the way, will you? <laughs> <laughs> of course we will. <laughs> thank yeah. you. But I will tell you, he makes the funniest jokes about you guys. Oh my god, I. I his stuff so on shit. Instagram is hysterical. I like almost, if it wasn't for the fact I try to like, I try to like, con like control myself or else I'd be pressing LOL yeah. on everything yeah. you post. Just wait. Because you and I are like, that's Oh, it's so funny. Your yeah. sense of humor is like perfect for me. Yeah. I love it. I'm going to get back on though. I'll get back What's on. What's happened to you? I got kicked off. For what? Oh God. Yeah. Long story. Yeah. It's because, uh, you know, there was, was a whole like, there was a whole period where um, people were getting kicked off for making certain statements. Oh, or yeah. Okay, that was when you got kicked off. And I okay. just, yeah, and they, they actually went through old, like, like stories that I posted years before that had disappeared years ago, and they were, like, giving me warnings about them. I'm like, this is weird. And then I got kicked off, so. Does, do you care? Stupid. I, n actually, no. I it didn't don't, affect I, the business. I don't, I don't yeah. care. I don't care. Um, I went on Twitter, and then, boom, lo and behold, Elon bought Twitter. I'm not saying that I made that happen. But <laughs> right, but the, the, <laughs> there is some type of coincidence, maybe. Bit. Yeah, there's some weirdness there. But I, I might go back on. We'll see what happens. But do you feel like a lot of your time has been like now? You have a lot more time in your day? Because it's such an addictive, social media is so addictive, right? I mean, I didn't do a whole lot on there except um, for posts, like memes that I would find funny and then occasional thoughts. But I always yeah, write my thoughts. Yeah, you guys had similar stuff. Yeah, I write my, th my thoughts down anyway, and I'll usually bring them up on the show. So it's not really, it didn't really take too, it didn't like save tons of time. Right, the goal were, for us was always to disappear anyways. So we set out We want to turn it all off. So that we want to get to a point where the only way to even hear us is through this. And then you won't be able to actually communicate with us. Really? Yeah. That's the goal. That's so, you guys are, so clever. Mm. I love it's that. Not too, really? It, it, Is it a good business? So I feel like it's like, really. You know what's clever about you guys? Like I said at the beginning of this podcast, what made you got, in my opinion, part of your success is that you've stuck to the rules that you guys had made with each oh, other. Yeah, yeah. And it's like one for all or all for one type of situation. And it's clear and concise and you have a goal and you know what you want and you just kind of, you stay on path all the time. And yeah. it's working. Yeah, no, you know? it, it's what's it to maybe to, I don't know if it's to a fault, but it, it that's a hundred percent true. Like these guys, 
their integrity is so strong that they would burn it all down uh, without compromising their integrity. And the, 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 the cool thing about it is, and we've talked about this off air, just because of the climate, right? The way the climate is with right. social media, people getting canceled. They said the wrong thing. Did we say the wrong thing on the podcast? Can we get <sighs> blowback or whatever? We've all talked about this. And if one of us says something that's whatever, and it gets one of us canceled, we're all going to give everybody the finger and say, you could take us all down then. I love and, that. And, and, and maybe that's a, maybe that's a, a bad thing or a good thing. Yeah. I don't know, but you know, I think you got to stand by that. You have, and, but this, that's part of your success. Even when you said to, you always say, actually, not just once. And I, I pick it up. I picked it up. When you write, when you wrote that book, yeah. you say our book. Yeah. It's not like Sal's book. No, no. It's like when we wrote this book or our book. Do you know we, that he split those proceeds with us? We 100%. did nothing. Yeah, yeah, we didn't do anything with that. And it, by the way, it, you know, we would have, no one would have balked if he took all of it. Yeah. So it was never, never once did anybody go like, oh, you, you got this book deal because of us. Like, bro, I didn't do nothing with that book. Yeah, but I you don't know what? That's amazing. I, yeah, but yeah. you know, mm -hmm. there's, there's a lot of stuff that happens behind the scenes with these, with these guys. Well, it's the reason that. why each guy does an individual stuff yeah. that contributes to the pot that but nobody look, has to be. That's what, but that, that is why you guys are consistently strong and getting stronger and stronger well, and growing. You know what the big weakness is for people is their ego. And if you look at, there's a lot of, there's so many stories of successful bands or partnerships totally. where one of them gets a big head and thinks that they're going to go do their thing and doesn't realize the importance of the rest. You know, it's like- Of you a know, team, of a team. Yeah, you could be a cake and the icing gets all the, all the you know, oh, look, this icing is so amazing, but without the eggs, the flour, the milk or whatever, you got nothing. So- um, we all know that and it's, it is definitely, you know, one for all with that. And maybe again, maybe to our, our fault, Not at all. I found, you know, it's great to work with people the same, that feel the same. Look at yeah. like, look, I'm going to use you two as an example. Look at you two. Yeah. They've never broken up. Yeah, yeah. They've Bono has never gone on his own to do his own, you know, his own album. Right. They've always been a group and a cohesive group and they're the most successful band in the world. It hasn't taken anything away from Bono being Bono or the edge being the edge. Right. right? But they noticed very early it's going to be a one for all or all for for one. And that is what it is. Look at all the bands who were super successful. And then the lead singer got it too big of a head. He went on his own yep. and they never, they, they, it never, when they came back, it was never the same. And no. they were never the same. If they just kind of played it out and stuck it out together, like Harry Styles right now, right? He had that One Direction. I'm not going to, that's a bad example because One Direction is hardly you too, right? right? But, you know, what I'm going to say is that band's now gone without him. And he's going to probably like, he's not, he's no Bono, right? So I feel the people who like, when you see you have a good thing, and you, you you know how you how you complement each other. You have to like lean in hard and keep that and keep and and that to me is how you really build like true, like true success. Like e like like a bond. Like is. A, ego do. and ego and greed are a power, both very powerful yeah. things. And oh, I think that's hundred percent. I think that's both right. It's normally one or the other. Either you you seek. Uh, to be the the main person and you care about. I mean, that was what, when we knew it was going to work early is because nobody wanted that. We had a fourth person in, on that was a partner that was part of the show. And so five, including Doug. And uh, I remember we recorded like 15 episodes before it ever went live. These never aired. And he was going to, he would have been an equal partner, just like all of us. And I mean, we had done at this point work weeks and weeks and weeks of work, episodes, like episodes, edited, so, ready but... to rock. We're about to launch. What happened? Yeah. He texts us that his sponsor was a little weary because the show was very edgy. And so he says, I got to back out. And he was the one with the social media presence. No. So he had all yeah. the social media presence. But on I mean, Adam had a small, like that. you know, Adam had like 15,000 followers. The rest of us had none. This guy had a hundred and something thousand. That would have been our, our, our first step. Yeah, you rock, you rock. He bounced. Yeah. And I mean, I tell the story. I've told the story a million times. I, we got the text message and I prepared my, this is before I, I really knew these guys, right? We had, we worked together, but we were getting to know each other. And I was like, I remember thinking in my head, like, I'm going to get on the phone and I'm going to convince everybody. This was what I thought, right? I'm going to get on. I'm going to convince everybody that we're going to keep going. And before I could open my mouth, we got on the phone. Before, literally, before I could open my mouth, I think it was Adam that's like, fuck that, we're going to go. Justin's like, yeah, let's do it again. I didn't have to say a word. I'm like, this, this is great. Are you well, serious? Well, and after we finished the first recording, I remember he would be like... You know, uh, you know, Sal, you talked a lot in that one. So next time, let's let Justin open Justin the show it, and then I'll do that. And then we'll rotate. That. Like he wanted like he cared so much about who was getting the most attention. And the three of us were like, oh, OK, 
Like we kind of let him lead that, and but none of us cared about that. None of us are like, I don't give a shit if I sit here for an hour. Don't say a goddamn word. If it's a conversation I don't care about, I might not say anything. If it, if it works, it works. Yeah. See, yeah. To me, there is something about hubris. What's that? Is it called hubris? Like hubris? hubris. Yeah, hubris. Mm. Like to me, I think there's something to be said for that, right? Like if you cared so much, it's the people like are like that are like so coveted like that. Like we we're talking about the social media people who hold everything so tightly. They want to have all the attention. They're so competitive. Like it's like at, at, you don't. I, I feel like they'll they will burn, right? But this the people who kind of are like who are in, whose intentions are really good and like. It is what it, you know, like kind of like let things kind of be the way they're going to play itself mm -hmm. out and have like have not just intention, but have like the, the right intentions behind it are the ones that kind of stand the test for time. They like, do. Look at this. And, and, and they're the most successful. But you but again, define success that because What's some people would say, you? right. And some people, oh, well, this guy makes a lot of money and he's like, he's not doing any of that. that money's not everything. Like like real success is a, it's a it's a it's a it's a, a sphere that contains quite a bit, and you tend to define it a bit. And I know very wealthy people that are very unsuccessful. I've trained a lot. Of, look, I tell you what, like all of us at one point when we were trainers in this area, at some point we made a reputation just in the local area, right? Because we trained for so yeah. long or whatever, and we'd get very wealthy people that would hire us. And some of these people, um, very depressed, most of very them, unsuccessful. Um, otherwise, you know, and they made a lot of money and it was great. I mean, I learned so much through training people like that. Cause I could see like, Oh, this is not everything. Of course. That's not everything to me. That's, and I've had the same experiences, which is why I don't think that money, I never think that money equals success. I just think money equals being rich, mm. having money. That doesn't mean you're successful. And also like being happy. Where's the, where's the, where is the equation? Like money just never equals happiness. Mm -hmm. I see more people who have money that are miserable than people who are just like broke, but like really kind of happy. Mm -hmm. Like there is a little, like, that's why I've, I think that it's really important to be very clear and define what success is for people and what it means. Because if you, if you just tout money, and this is what happens with, that's why I fucking hate social media people like that, these motivators, because it's like, that's all they talk about. It's like, you know, that because if you make more money, make more money, then that's going to show, that's going to make you successful, but it doesn't, it doesn't make you successful. It makes you have some money, but that doesn't take away anything else. That doesn't mean you have like, you're happy. It doesn't mean that you're fulfilled. It doesn't mean that like you like yourself. Yeah. Like it doesn't mean you like yourself. Define it for you. You Jen. know what's funny? Define, I, define success for you. Some I wanna, of the I most. I want to hear. I wanna hear. Like, oh yeah, I'd like yeah. I like to, I'd like to hear. I'd like I was going to hear, make hear. a comment that some of the, some of the most fulfilled people ever met were volunteers. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't. Money make is any only money. A money is simply a tool. Yeah. That's all. It money is, is a tool. It, yeah. So what is, tool, is what is success, success for you? Well, for me, you know what money does? It can help buy. It can it can help. Um, it helps buy. Uh, certain things that you would other like health insurance to be healthy. Sure, so me, it also can help you buy time. So buy it time. can help you buy time. So me, success is first of all, without health you have nothing, right? So to me, if I'm healthy, then that's that's the number one thing because without like, you can't do anything if you don't have health, right. right? But to be honest with you, the most important thing to me is like inter like relationships that are meaningful. That to me is like my my driver in life. If I don't have relationships or meaning behind relationships, it's very dissatisfying and I become like very unhappy and depressed. So that to me is what what feeds my my soul. I love I love having people who uh in my life that that are like-minded or I feel I can trust and they have my back. I think that's super I think I think that to me like emotion, being emo, feeling emotionally satisfied to me is being successful. I, I, the fact that like, having my kids want to spend time with me, you know, have you ever thought about stuff like that? Like, I got to see, mm -hmm. I got to see that part of you when I came to interview oh. you at your house, uh, because you're a very successful woman. So, wow. um, uh, understated, but Jen's very successful, uh, in what she's done. She doesn't flaunt it, but she's extremely successful, hard worker, I was at your house. Your kids show up because I don't remember they were getting dropped off or something. And right, right. You, you, it was school. It was like three o'clock. Yes. It, you obviously have a good relationship with your kids. And then we talked about kids and you were very involved in what they do. And being a mom, being an involved mom is a lot of work. It's a lot of work. It's a, yes. And, and I, I, I remember thinking to myself, how does she balance 
all of this out? How do you, I'd love to ask you, like, how do you balance all of that out? Listen, I don't think, I, th I think it's really hard and I'm not going to lie to you. I think it's super difficult. And like, sometimes I'm better at it than other times. And like right now with everything happening with the book, I'm probably a little bit more uh, like distracted than I would like to be. But I think at the end of the day, I, I, that's the first thing I think of. Like, I don't want my kids not to want to like, to like have a bad memory of me mm. or not want to be around me or like, or make my kids feel like they're, they're second rate or, or the back burner. Like to me, my kids, my kids feeling, my kid, my kids feeling that they're loved by me and is the most important thing. So I'm very cognizant of that. So when they walk in the room, if I, even if I'm in the middle of doing a podcast, as I do it in my house downstairs now, but I'll always be like, hi, Dylan. Like I'd be, I, I'm overly like, like happy to see yeah. them because I don't want them to feel that my work is more important than they are. Right. Like to me, that's like heart wrenching if that, that happens in a bad way. Um, but I don't think it's, I don't think it's like, would be honest if I said, yeah, you can have it all balance, blah, blah. I don't, th I don't believe in the word balance. I don't think life is balanced. I think there's some times in life that I'm working too much. And then like that part of my life is, is flailing and I'm, I'm doing even extra shitty at. And there's maybe some times when I'm like with my, with my, with my personal life. And then my, my business is kind of like this, you know, like when I first had my kids, when I, when I had my kids uh, or my both times, actually, was it the first or the second? I can't remember now, but um, I had a really big opportunity business wise and I wasn't able to take it cause I just had a kid. And like, basically I went from like, I went from going up the, or kind of like tra my trajectory was like, was growing and my, and my prospects were getting higher and I was going up and up. And then I plummeted really fast and it took me a long time to kind of get a baseline back and then start to grow again. Because there is something to be said that like, when you want to be present mom. It's different for guys. I don't care what you say. It's different for guys than it is for girls. You can love me. You can hate me, but that is the case. Mm -hmm. Being a mom, having like being a present mom, you have, there's more pressure on you than there is on a guy. For now, you mean pressure from like to people be, around to you? To be available to, and to, and to take can care. Can I tell you something? Yeah. So here's, here, now I'm going to back you up. Okay. Uh -oh. So I have two, I have two older kids, yeah. right. That I have from a previous marriage. Yes. I'm very involved. Okay. Uh, we have dual custody. They're with me every other week, but I also like see 50 -50? them. Like 50-50? Yeah. So, okay. but I also see them on the weeks that they're not with me. I'm always talking, whatever. And um, people are like so blown away when, oh my God, you're the best dad. I was just going to say that. Nobody says that to their mom. Never. That's yeah, the bar 100%. is very low. <laughs> the bar, men have really set the bar low and Super I feel low. bad about that, but it's, it's totally true. It's like, if you're an every other weekend dad and you just show up, everyone's like, wow, what a great dad. So, I, me, just, so I back you up with I, that. No, I, I, by yeah. the way, I think it's so terrible. That's a hundred percent true. And like, for example, I was saying my husband's in like Miami for the week, right? That's why I can't stay for their, your party. I got to go back because uh, I, I'm going to be, you know, I got to go home. Yeah. And I feel like it's not the same, like if it was the opposite way around, I would be shunned. Like, how yeah, can she go away? I, I would, I, I'd be so judged. Like, oh my gosh, she's gone for a week. Yeah. I leave for like 48 hours. I get like, I get uh, people just like how my 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 own mother is like, how can you leave your kids for forty eight hours? What's, <laughs> like, what's more important, your kids or your yeah. work? I'm like, mom, I'll be back in like twenty seven hours, you know. Like, but there's so much more pressure on a woman to be present and available for their children than for a guy. Like my husband could be gone for uh, you know uh, ten days, he comes back and takes the kids to a basketball their their basketball practice, and like everyone there's like, oh my god, you're such a wonderful dad, how great! Oh my god, you're so wonderful. I'm so present. I'm like, you know fuck what? off. I know, yeah. <laughs> like, really? Who takes them to the doctors, their dentist, who's yeah. feeding them, who's going grocery shopping? Who's like, what kind of bullshit is that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, know? hold on. Now, I'm going to back up the guys here for a second. <laughs> you know? No, no, no. Save us, please, guys. I know. No, 100% true, but I, those societal pressures come from, uh, from they, they start from nature. What I mean by that is, it's far more rare for a mother to abandon her children. That's true. Naturally. You're right. Naturally. And I, look, I've witnessed this. I have four children. A, the bond that a mother has with their child, first of all, it starts way before it does with the father. Yeah. You're connected to the baby. You're growing the baby. Yeah. We don't make, we make that bond after they're born and it actually starts to develop after they're born and they, you know, the months are with us. Mom's already got that totally. strong ass bond. So it comes from there. So it does come from there. Just like, if you and your husband were out uh, with your kids and 
a dog, a rabid dog came and tried to attack you guys and you ran away with the kids. Everybody wouldn't say anything. If your husband took the kids and ran away and left you there, there'd be a different judgment, right? Yeah. So there's different pressures. That being said, um, uh, it's a hundred percent agree. I, I mean, bar, I think the same. The bar's super low. The yeah, bar's I, super I think it's low. the same thing with though with men with the providing, right? Like I have a yeah. One of my be- one, of, one of my best friends, his wife actually, um, they both make decent money. She makes better money than he does. He is one of the most like active father. I mean, he gets them up and, and feeds them for breakfast. He takes them to school. He picks them up. He does a lot because his job is flexible hours wise. She works longer right, hours. Right. So he does all this crazy shit, but he gets kind of punked and disrespected by some of our peers and our friends because he doesn't make as much money as his wife totally, does. It's so true. it's like, it, I mean, it's, it, there we, we get judged differently by everybody else, but I, I totally agree it's that way for I think women it, being present and then men for being the provider well, if yeah. you're not. Uh, what, and what happens, I feel like what people don't really talk that much about is that there's so many like this, it's the devil's in the details when you're raising kids, right? Like there's so many things that you have to do in the minutia of things, right? Like the coordinating, the organizing, which is very time consuming, oh, yeah. right? The the driving to like the practices or the doctors or all of that. Stuff the little is, things. The little things that take up a lot of time. So if you're a working mom, like I am, plus you have all the minutia stuff, you know, then, then like, you're not going to have as much time to do the quote unquote fun stuff, right? Like doing all the things that the dad gets to do. So then what happens is this is like a bone of contention, right? So then like you're, I mean, I'm talking for a friend this here. Is true. That's yeah. this, this is, is true. That's why I'm laughing. That's why I'm laughing right now. I'm speaking, I'm speaking on my friend's Dad behalf. shows up. All right, kids, we're going to have ice cream. Yes. Or like, hey Mom's kids, like, let's go to the trampoline park. Or hey kids, let's go play basketball. Hey kids. And then I'm stuck or my friend's stuck doing all this shit work, you know? You know, plus actual work in yeah. my in my career. You know, let me tell you something. I'm going to make you feel better right now. Okay. Because okay? because again, because I got divorced. No, I you're going to make my friend feel better. I'm going to make your friend feel better. <laughs> I, I got to witness this firsthand. So I was the fun dad in my first marriage, yeah. and I and when I got divorced, I really want, I had to get involved because otherwise, you know, I'm not going to see them half the time. Right. So I did the doctors. I did the school. I know the teacher. Make them lunch, but it was a learning curve because I did none of that before. Right. Here's what I realized though. That's how you know your kids. I did thought I knew my kids, but I didn't You're know 100% my kids. hundred percent. It was right. the storytelling, the putting them to bed, put your pajamas on, make your breakfast, make your lunch, take you to the doc. That's how totally. you know your kids. So although it's the work and it's the whatever, you otherwise you don't know. You don't really know. You don't really develop that relationship. What, okay, first of all, you don't exactly, but it goes back to this whole you don't know what you don't know, right? So my friend would say <laughs> that you know when she wakes up with the kids uh, every morning to make breakfast and make the lunches and coordinate and organize, then like I said, it's only then that then the girl. Okay, only has a finite amount of time to be super efficient with taking care of herself, yeah. which is, you know, let's say working out or whatever it is, like yeah. working out for sure for my friend. And, <laughs> you know, and then also making sure the house stuff is looked after. Then you have like three or four hours to be super efficient with like your professional life, totally. you know, versus a guy who can spend what, 12, 15 hours a day, let's say, doing that? And then 45 minutes of like, what? Like, hey, kids, let's, you know, like, I'm going to take you, for, you know, like, let's do some backflips or let's, you know, watch, you know, like, let me do something super, like, dangerous with you. Well, you'll love me and your mom will fucking freak out. And that becomes the balance. Important. That becomes a relationship. That's why this conversation is so funny because I think we've all had these conversations. Oh, like, right? Oh, yeah. oh, I saw a video once that you posted where I thought maybe your, what your uh, wife would have, like, like freaked out. You, I think you took your kid and yeah, you were like throwing, you were throwing them, them up. So bad. Oh. I launched him onto that beanbag. I'll throw you, the beanbag oh. will be over Doug and I'll take him from here. And, whoo, and oh my toss God. him across the room. My my husband, when my kid was three years old, he threw him on a Velcro wall. Okay, <laughs> I kid you. Threw okay, and like okay, and I was standing somewhere That's else. Right, I like my back, my <laughs> back was to the thing, right? And then like I'm like that can't be happening with my. I, I like it's, that can't be Dylan. Throws him. He ends up upside down, my kid. Okay. <laughs> they couldn't get him off. I fucking lost my shit. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And then you see all these parents like, oh my God. And my 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 husband was like, What's the big deal? He can come off. And they kind of and he knew I was like gonna freak out, which is why he like had to pretend like it was no big deal. But like my kids laugh, they go, Oh my yeah. god, he's the funnest, most fun parent in the world. <laughs> Meanwhile, you know what I mean? Like it's like the kids don't the kids end up liking the the fun parent more. 
her because they're fun. Yeah, but then look, we look at Mother's Day and Father's Day. You know, it's like yeah. li- li- you, you, the kids know this. Yeah. They I don't know. know. This. It comes, Mama it is comes full circle as they get older. You Mama think so? is absolutely, I, I absolutely think it better it for will. my friend. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I wish yeah. you would bring your husband down here once. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like, he needs why? To defend himself. It's not, it's I'm not pretty fair. sure we all get along. I'm pretty I'm sure. I'm sure you're going to get along. You would get along. Every guy loves him. I told you, he, yeah. every guy loves him. He's also like very, he does all sorts of like crazy stuff like that. What do you call that thing? Um, hydrofoiling now is his big thing. He oh, hydrofoils wow. and like, he is like a big biker and like. Are you kids yeah. super, because you guys are Yeah, both they're athletic. athletic. They yeah. are. They, I mean, they do a lot of that stuff. Like my, my little one is a soccer player, basketball, baseball, um, everything. I mean. How more, old are you kids now? Seven and nine. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you're only a few years away from teenagers. Well, a few the, the nine year old, maybe I mean, three, yeah. four years. Yeah, I mean, years. the funny thing is, like, they already feel like teenagers. I feel like in today's you time, I, I yeah. can only imagine. You have no idea. But I feel, you know, it's funny. People who have like babies think that's a lot of work. I think it's harder now because of all the stuff that like you have to deal with. You just wait till you get to the. What family. are some of the reflections? Really? In, I mean, what are some of the reflections you've had? With with the kids, like in what you, way? Seeing yourself, like where you're like, like you see something, you're like, you want to be mad. And you're like, God damn, that's my me. daughter is like exactly like me. Yeah, yeah. she's like super obstinate, uh, but but she's like she's sassy and she's she's very ath- she's athletic. She's sassy and she's very what she's observant, so she notices things and calls me out on certain things all the time. <laughs> and I can't get mad at her because on one side, I mean, I, I appreciate that and I want her to be able to do that. But then I'm like, what the fuck? how do you know this? You're seven, yeah. <laughs> you know, to me, that's something that I find super, like, it just, it blows my mind how like, basically these kids could mirror you or they mirror what you, that you don't love necessarily love about yourself. And because kids are just so true, honest souls, yep. like they don't know how to lie. They just say it how it is. It, it's a, ref- it, you have no choice but to kind of look internally and look at yourself. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, yeah. 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 It just cool. gets. And I have two. So I have two teenagers, a toddler, and then an infant. So I get all the. God, you're all just the procreating like yeah, a, like, I know. like it's He's unbelievable. Got a you would think yeah. he never time. works, right? Th- I'm just gonna say, when do you have time for all this? Like sex all the time. <laughs> they do everything. Christ. Like you just like, <laughs> do you just go home all day and just like, like what are you doing? They're supporting at home? my family right now. I appreciate it, guys. <laughs> yeah. No, it's um, but he you know when they're hot. when they're teenagers, it's tough because <clears throat> you because as they're growing up, you're like the coolest thing ever. And then all of a sudden you're not. Right. They don't want to listen to you and they don't want to share with you when there's it a problem. It happens already, by the way. That's really hard. You know, when you, when you see something's wrong and you want to talk to them and they don't want to open up and, and you're the old, they're, they're, you know, teenagers. So they're smart enough and old enough. Yeah. You can't like force them. Like, what are you going to do? And it's really, or they have a tough, you know, relationship with a friend or the boyfriend breaks up with them or the girlfriend breaks up with them. And it's like real, like this is, it's not like, oh my, you know, I can't find my truck, my toy truck. Right. It's, it's like stuff. the girl that I really like now says she doesn't like me because of this, that, and the other. And you're just like, oh yeah, these are real, you know, issues now we got to deal with. And then the consequences of bad decisions are massive as they get older, like drugs, alcohol, driving under the influence, you know, unprotected sex. I mean, who knows? Like right? real, pro- like real shit, basically. Like real shit. Yeah. So it's really, really hard. Um, it's much more challenging for sure. So, yeah. 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 That's what you're looking forward to. Oh, okay. <laughs> Wonderful. I can't wait. It yeah, sounds, it sounds so time. fun. It sounds so fun. <laughs> it's a good t- I got good kids too, but it's still I, I just find it super difficult. And I think that it's just really, what I think would be real, it's what I find even now. It's like when a kid has, issues and they don't want to like you see something in your kid that is that that yeah. that scares you about how they how they mm-hmm. react if, like when they if they if when someone is mean to them or when they are when they have whatever it is and you have no you have no power to change that you can't help them or you can't like be like you can't just, just step in you can't just step in and be like why do you care about that or don't do that like they are their own people Right. And there's yeah. only so much power you can have, even yeah. as a, if, even with kids who are nine at that point. It's really, I mean, my daughter, she had, she, she, some kids tried to bully her because they were making fun of her shoes. And this was funny. And uh, I got Adam on the phone because he's a shoe connoisseur. And he basically is like, that, yeah. yeah, he like totally is like, no, those are, you know, I don't remember what they were. Jordan, what, Jordan what, what, yeah, whatever, whatever, number something. And, you know, got her hyped up. Tell him Uncle Adam will kick their ass. It was, it was really cool. But, you know, uh, one thing with, with teenagers, this is a cool thing that I, that my wife taught me is cause it's so hard to get them to talk. So she said, just create space. I'm like, what do you mean? She goes, you know, drive them to school every day, but don't say anything in the car. Eventually they'll start to talk to you. It's so true. So if you just sit around each other, 
and do nothing. Say, no, no electronics. We're going to be off our phones. What am I going to do? Nothing. We're just going to sit around. If you do that enough, they start to open up and talk. You don't have to force them. So just being in silence. Just, just being around, just, just allowing for the space for conversation to happen. That makes it happen. Interesting. Because you can't force it. Well, you know, it's funny because what happens in that a lot of times is like you, what you, people usually overcompensate and be like, so tell me what happened in school. What yeah, happened to yeah, it? Yeah. You know, did you like your teacher? They say, da, 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 like, like yeah. And they don't want to tell you anything no. because it's when you ask. It's like, by the way, again, a microcosm of life right yeah. there, right? It's like the same thing in, in, in adults, right? Yeah. Sometimes you got to give a little bit of space for people to come and kind of get out of their shell and feel comfortable. But it's about reading the room and knowing knowing you know, that. You know what I learned with clients is when you ask them a question and you want more to get from them. So you'd ask them like, so, you know, tell me about your fitness history. And then they'll talk, 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 and they'll stop. You just don't say anything and wait. People don't like silence. They are uncomfortable with silence. So it's like five to 10 seconds of that and they'll tell you more. And then pause. Tilt your head. Five seconds side. of quiet. And then they'll tell <laughs> you more. That's so true. And then people just keep telling you more and more. It's a really, I learned it's that a, from a therapist. Effective. It's actually 100% true. Yeah. Do, you want to, do you want me to teach you? A, now we're talking yes, about like, a, I'm going to teach you something for to change the neuroplasticity in your brain, like okay. an actual physical thing you can do. Yes. Are you ready? Yeah. Let's do it. Okay. You're going to make us close our eyes? Nope. You're okay. going to take your hands. Okay. The live audience can participate too. This is Let's crazy. Go. Okay. So with your thumb. Yeah. I want you to go with your index finger, touch your index finger, then your second, third, and then your pinky. Okay. Okay. With with this hand, I want you to do the same thing, but the opposite. You're going to go pinky first, that finger, okay. the middle finger, oh and then the God. index. Okay? okay. So now we got to do them at the same time? At the same time. Can you do it? I do. No, yeah. Yeah, no way you can. I'm doing it's it right me, now. It's giving me a headache. Yeah. Look. Watch it's out, right? crazy, right? Yeah. It it will it will change the way well, your brain. I almost did it. Oh, I've messed up that time. That's like and doing this, do rubbing, your, yeah, rubbing yeah. your belly. Uh -huh. I find this even more difficult. Oh no, that's more difficult. This for is sure. more difficult because what happens is this will teach you patience. This teaches you patience because look at Adam. You did exactly what most people do. Uh. Almost nine, like nine out of ten people, they try it once. They're like fuck it, I can't stand it. I'm not yeah. doing it yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. Which is human nature. It's the people. That are like, hey, you know what? I'm gonna try it again. Adam, I'm I'm surprised. I'm not surprised. <laughs> and if you do it over and over again, get and like practice it and get good at it and get faster and faster, oh, I've got it, it now. like teaches you. Oh, Isn't that, that crazy? That. <laughs> is, I don't know why yeah, I just thought of that. As well. yeah. What is uh, you're like? That's why. Let's get on with it. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> He's like, it's, it's giving like, me a headache. Like, yeah, it just, exactly. Yeah. It just made me come up with this new supplement idea. What? <laughs> what is the most recent parent? failure for yourself something oh. that something that you look back you're like fuck i fucked up i shouldn't have done that <laughs> oh my god yeah so I, sometimes i lose my shit i i like i like for example i think this sounds so stupid uh i think what happened was my kid accidentally uh spilt like and she's sometimes she's like she's a little bit of a like a like a klutz, klutz. yeah, and she like knocked over uh, the the milk her milk and it spilled all over my computer, and I was like oh my god you're such a klutz oh. and I was like oh my god like I I I was so mad at myself for like weeks about saying that word because you don't want to, you don't want to say that word. But this was like the, I think this was like in a row of like four things that she, she, she kind of like made a mistake with. Yeah. So like before that, what, before that happened, she was at school and she tripped over a ball and she fell, her, she tripped over a ball. She knocked her forehead on a metal bench split her head open. The school called me. I was like, I rash, I ran over to the school, took her to the emergency, went to the special doctor, the plastic, plastic surgeon. We had to get her head with four stitches. It was like a whole thing. Right? right. And I was like, it was awful. Cause she tripped. She's wearing shoes that she shouldn't have wore. And I told her not to wear them. And I, and then, and then after that, like three other consecutive things happened. So this was like the last draw. And I was very mad at myself for saying that. But what are you supposed to do as a parent? Yeah. Right? How do you remedy? How did you remedy it? How do you remedy that? I basically, it took me a long time to forgive myself. And then I overcompensated by then telling her for the next God knows how long, still do, how 
kind she is, how smart she uh, is, how powerful. Yeah. So you go the I, I, like the pendulum so that's not, had to the, swing. I don't think that's the answer. I think the answer is what is the answer? You, just, you admit you were wrong. You admit that it was the wrong thing to do. You know yeah, what? Kids are I'm, smart. Yeah. You know what? Your your mom. I was. I had a, a morning. I was stressed. This that. You did that. And I reacted. And I said that's something. True. I said something I don't truly believe. And I'm sorry. Yeah. That, that's the answer. The answer actually, is just to admit you're right. Admit just you're to kind of call it, just call it, kind of bring it to attention and say that. Yeah. I mean, and then you, then you don't have to praise her when she's not really being. One hundred percent. You think, know you're a good mom, by the way. Is you think you think you've yeah, thought you about care. this? You I care. thought. Oh, I care. I mean, listen. It, it's like rumin. I ruminate over this oh, because you know, like, I have moments like that. Oh. You know, because you know, you're still a parent. Is like you're still a human being, totally. right? Totally. And, you know, you sometimes you, I react a lot. It takes a lot of energy for me to work on not reacting because I'm super impulsive in my, in general. So it's like something, it's like a work in progress. And so that was something that like really bothered me because I know basically, even on my podcast, you know, here I have a podcast where I have the best people, the best experts in the world, psychologists, ch ch behavioral therapists, you know, cognitive Stanford, Harvard, whoever, come on and tell me about trauma in kids and how trauma leads to chronic illness. Trauma leads to all sorts of mental illnesses down the road. And then here I am with all this, like oh, no. armed with all this information. <laughs> and then I do something that then I'm going to be t telling a story to my own kid's life that then she may feel a certain way based on what I'm saying. And to have that type of like, to have that type of guilt about it. So I, and, and then I don't want to be that parent who just like praises to your point. So to, I think that's a very good point, Adam, that like, I think a great thing to do is like admit fault and be yeah. like, listen, I screwed up as a mom. I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. But sometimes we say things we don't mean. Please forgive me. Yeah. As like, like treat a child like you would yes. an adult, adult yep. you know, and you know, but you think you don't it's think hard. about that. We all, we all go. No, that, obviously you know? hindsight's twenty twenty, right? We're sitting here talking about it, so it's easier to piece that together. When you're in the moment, emotions are flying and rolling around. It's probably harder to piece. Right, that and together. you just say shit like, yeah. you know, it's. I think it's a real. Uh, I, I think it's a, it's a it's an art, and it's actually it's a skill to know when to bite your tongue and not say something, and uh, and to be quiet when you when you have all the ammunition and and fire just to like go, mm -hmm. you know, to do the opposite. Yeah. No, it's, we all have those moments. I have moments where I, I mean, I think about them still. I remember once when my, my kid, he was real little, we were potty training him and he wet the bed and I got mad at him for it. And then, uh, you know, one morning I go to get him and he's like sitting in the corner. I'm like, what's up, buddy? What are you doing over there? He's like, I put myself in timeout. You know, because I went. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, what a piece of shit I am. I know, right, right. I made right. feel so bad. But for them. So, so, guilt is a real thing, you know, oh, like yeah. it's terrible. Oh, yeah, it's terrible. I just think it's very difficult. I think raising yeah. children in general is very, very That's why it's difficult. the, it, that's, it'll make you grow. If you care, it'll make if you grow. If you care. Because you have to. Because you, you have no choice. You have to. I, I don't, do you ever find that like people with like the differences between, don't you ever think like, people who don't have kids versus do have kids, like the, the kind of like efficiency, like I was talking about earlier that you have to be when you have kids yeah. and like the, and, and the mental energy and energy allocation that you have to put towards that is so exponentially higher than when, if you, when, when you didn't have kids. Oh yeah. You're, 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 you know? you're it's, it, but you can't, it's hard to understand until you're there. Cause I mean, right. okay. It's like fitness other than, well, more than, I mean, other than your own children, like before you have kids, do you really love or care about anything more than yourself? Right. Probably until you not. Have kids. I mean, you love your parents, you love your, pa your partner. Totally. Or whatever. But then when you have your kids, you're like, Oh, I really love something more than myself. Right. So, I mean, how do you know what that's like until you experience you don't. it? That's yeah. why like any, anything in life, going back to everything we're talking about, it's like, you don't know what you don't know until you put yeah. your, you're in that situation or when yeah. you try that certain thing. You ever do this now, once you become a parent, you ever do this where you're like, you know, maybe you have a bad habit or you do something that you're maybe not so proud of, whatever you think. Am I the kind of person that I would want my kid to grow up and be like, or am I the kind of person that my, that I'd want my daughter to date? Like I'll do that with myself sometimes. And it's really powerful. Oh my motivator. God, so true. I do that. Can I tell you, I do that all the time. Yeah. You do that. You do that. Oh too. yeah. It's a very powerful motivator. I was like, would I want my son to, to say this or to act this way? Or would I want my daughter to bring home a and guy And then what do you do that? about it? I change. I try to change and be the person that I would want my kid to be like or want my kid to be married to. 
You know, it's a very powerful motivator. It's hard though. It's super hard. Yeah. It's so easy to be selfish and not think about those things, right? When you're, when their kids are even small, right? And like yeah. just go about your business and or in general, because it's one thing to want to change. It's a different thing to actually do the steps to change. Yeah. And that takes a lot of time and commitment. And it takes you to be bold. Yeah, it takes you to be bold. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Circle back. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. a great nice circle right back out. there. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're always a blast to, to oh, talk to, Jen. Thank you. One I, of our favorite people, um, people have to read your book, listen to your talks, because it's the what you say is extremely applicable and relevant. Extremely applicable and relevant. Thank you. So. I think it's important that, thank, I appreciate that. I, I want to just say that. What I like about, and I'm not just saying this because it's my book, but in general, I think it's really important when, if I'm right, I wrote a book that I feel that has practical, actionable things that people can do to get to where the, what they want to do tomorrow, what they don't have the the guts to do today, as opposed to just talking from a, a white tower, giving people the, the actual tools to do it themselves is I think just it's fundamental for change and to get to where you want to be. So, um, yeah, thanks. So I'm, I'm happy I wrote this book. And so I hope someone, they like it. That's I it. think they will. They I will. think they will. And you're, you're an example of it. So. Oh, thanks, yeah. Al. Thanks for coming on, Jen. Thank you for All having right. me. Thank you. Thank you. Today, we're going to teach you everything you need to know to build a strong, well-developed chest. When I think of you know, weak points and, and areas that I struggled with developing for a, a really long time, chest was up there with the- Yeah, it was for me. It was for me for sure. I got more caught up in the weight I could lift versus how I was developing my body. I think it's one of the most challenging muscles to develop for most people because the form and technique. 